Good day. My name is Matt. Welcome to my channel. This is Doom Comes to Williford, Episode 6. Following the traumatic, exciting, and dangerous events that took place in the last episode, the band will retire to Burrowmore. I have this great sexy map that somebody made for me. While the band is resting and recuperating after their events of the last episode, they are going to decide what they want to do next. Uh, you may have noticed I also have a new dice box, tray, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is actually a homemade one. It's not finished yet. I picked it up at Hobby Lobby. It's just basically a simple... I don't even know what it's supposed to be, but I thought it was kind of cool. Took a piece of leather, cut it up, glued it in there. I'm going to stain it, make it pretty. Maybe I'll put some runes on here that say something rude. But uh, I'm hoping that this shows the dice a little bit better and maybe even sounds kind of cool. Uh, oh, 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 forgot. In other news, the gentleman that made me my wonderful dice has uh, apparently been watching the videos. Hi, Mono Mix. And... Uh, for those of you who ask, I constantly get asked this question. Who made my dice? I got these dice from a gentleman. Uh, I believe he's in Spain named Mono Makes. M-O-N-O-M-A-K-E-S. Uh, on Etsy. You can find him on Etsy. He makes these wonderful dice. He's made all the dice that I use. But he realized that this die is supposed to be blue. And it is blue. Uh, let's see on, yeah, on my camera here. It just doesn't show up very strongly blue. Here's the other one you can see next to the red it's it's a lot more faded so he has actually opted to send me new dice that it will be a little bit more blue and will hopefully show up a little bit better in camera should probably have those in a couple weeks very cool thank you very much just want to give him a quick shout out but if you are interested in those dice get them especially as old dudes the n numbers are so big they're easy to read the band needs to decide what to do. I feel they really have two options. Well, I suppose three, but one is sit here and do nothing. <laughs> that isn't really going to solve anything. So the two options that I think they have are they go back into the ruins and try to see if they can find out any more information about the ghouls that turned Daisy into a ghoul. Maybe they can find out some more information in there, possibly find a way to cure her. The other option that I think would be pushed by Halronda and Willona would be to head to the village of Willowford, which has been in existence longer than Burrowmore, and try to find out if they can discern any more information about what transpired in this area, possibly you know, maybe the source of this undead infestation. And at the same time, we still do have the overhanging thread or story arch, whatever you want to call it, of the ghoul who decided to go for a stroll on the bottom of Willow Lake. I think both of those are logical paths to consider. Personally, I think as a player... I would probably lean more towards going back into the ruins. We know that there's more to explore. If you remember, there were two passages that we had not explored. Uh, and, and now that we have Dagna with us, maybe we'll be a little bit pre more prepared for this dungeon. So uh, there we go. We have the map set up. Everybody has rested up. They've replenished their torches. And uh, Hal has re-memorized her spell. Melona has done lots of praying to hopefully incur their blessing of her deity, whoever that is. We haven't really decided or discussed it. Hire a boat to go out to the ruins of St. Albinus. They will start early in the morning and get an early start on it. So they are going to come down the stairs and I am going to uh, use the old school idea that while you're out of the dungeon, 
things commonly move in. So let's roll to see if as they come down the stairs, uh, again, they're going to light their torches. They're going to go very cautiously and listen. But let's see if the dice gods hate us today. See if we encounter anything as we first come down the stairs. We do not. Thank the good lords. All right. We've already been down here. We already know what's down that way. So the band is going to proceed this way. Last time they bashed down that door, so we don't have to worry about that door. And they're going to enter this room. I'm also going to roll here just because this is a kind of a separate area. See if anything is encountered here. No. They left these doors open as well, and so they're going to enter this way. Now, before, we did not do any sort of checks because there is a secret door there, and elves get a bonus to notice doors when they go by them. If they are searching, they get a 1d4 chance. Um, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. A 1d4 chance, if not a one to or i'm sorry one and four on a six d6 or a one and two so i think we're going to come here and we've already been down this way but i think we're going to want to head this way so we're going to go this way let me grab my grab my dice i am using axe bane's deck of mini dungeons to kind of generate this on the fly so let's see what is there all right, oh, another hallway. And we're going to assume those both those doors are closed. And let's see, I think we would stop and listen. So let's stop and listen, see if we hear anything, just because this is a totally new area that we're entering here. Joseph, Hal, Hal hears something. Hmm, what does she hear? Ooh, so does Sam. Wilona does not. Dagna does not. What do they hear? Well, let's roll this. And you know what? I'm not going to use that because that does not that does not fit with my dungeon that I am playing in. So we're going to roll on this table here. This is a 2D6 table that I generated. And we'll see as a DM to figure out what is in there. Seven, that is a zombie. Ooh, interesting. I have these oh so cool cards that I made. Real quick, what we're gonna do is we're gonna see which one of these rooms the zombie or zombies is in. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, so as we are coming down this hall, get to about here and Hal and Sam hear some scuffling in this room right there and as a DM I want to know also what they're doing in there seven oh interesting we're, we're walking down this hall and we hear a noise coming out of that room sounds like maybe something bumped a table or something that's in there or a chair and then so then we you know piques our interest we start really listening that's when we also hear something else and it sounds like short bursts of of scratching or um, rocks being moved across each other and what i'm going to do now is we've got five pcs i think it's logical and this is just as a dm that there would be one zombie for each one of our players. So what I'm going to do is I'm going in this it's totally on the fly here. If the uh, blue is higher, we're going to say that there's four. If the six wins my Oracle roll, it's going to be more. Uh, oh, good. That's good. That means there's only four. So there are four zombies in there. And let me get a, all right, so we've got zombies. They have an AC of 11 or 12. Let's roll here. 
everyone that is a five or a six has a shield. So one, oop, two of them have shields. So we've got, this is their AC. We've got 12, 12, 11, 11, and then hit dice. White Box uses D6s for hit dice for all those newer generation players. Oh, wow, these are awesome zombies. So this one has four. This one has one. Sorry. This is my quick, uh, oops, this one has one also. Boy, these are some weak zombies. Four. All right, so we got a break on this one here, so this could be good. I think they want to investigate this so i definitely think the party band whatever you want to call it i flip between them both i know they will want to find out what is going on in here and i think that they will test that door let's see if that door is locked yes it is locked that means we're gonna have to bust down the door so hal has the no, I'm sorry. Walona has the crowbar. Walona is going to hand the crowbar to Joseph. Let him work that. She is anticipating that these are likely to be undead. And so she is going to get ready with her turn undead if she needs it. If you remember before I said it's actually on her mace that she uses. So she's probably like standing in front of him with the, the mace out ready to right in front of the door ready to uh attempt her turn on dead if she needs to everyone else will get ready sam is carrying the torch he's actually going to set the torch down on the ground so that he can fight so it's going to be behind him but when they open the door it'll shine into the room and the band will attempt well joseph will attempt to open the door um and uh, what we're going to do is, uh, what we've done before is the door has hit points, basically. Well, easy. This, this door has been pretty rotted and decayed over the ages. And so he's going to be able to slip that crowbar in right where the, the, uh, the, the lock is and basically just wrench it really quick. The door will then be able to be kicked in by uh, Wilona. And we will see, uh, I, let's see if we get the drop on the zombies. I think we will. So I'm, I'm actually going to use my oracle. I know you can roll a d6, but that seems kind of boring. So I think it's likely that they are surprised. Oh, and they are. All right. So we crack open the door, and that's when we see there are four zombies in there. And... One of them is sort of standing guard in front of the, right behind this door. So we open the door, we see one zombie standing there. And the other three zombies are actually scratching on the wall. They all have daggers and they're writing things on the wall. Now we'll figure out what that is here in a minute. And that is when Wilona is not going to attempt to turn them because... That she, they can see the room. Turning these things will really not have much of an effect. Basically, they'll run into the corner until we attack, and then they'll turn and attack. Let's see how the battle goes first, and then if we need to, she can fall back on that as well. So Alona is going to run into the room and attempt to smash the first zombie, and what we're going to do is we're just going to say this one's on the wall, that one's on the wall. That is the first one that she runs toward and attempts to strike. 16, that is a hit. Her mace does d6. She does two points of damage. Using a pen. Yep. Anti Dungeons and Dragons there without my pencil. Anyway, uh, she runs in. Dagna runs in right behind her and will attempt to strike that same zombie. Well, wow, what do we do when the dice do that? No, okay, we'll reroll. She misses. Hal is going to stand back in the hall. And keep an eye on both directions with the uh, torch right there. But just in case, she does have her staff out and she is also ready to cast her spell if she needs to. Joseph is going to run. Oh no, I'm sorry. Sam will run in next. He is going to run to the uh, zombie that is on this side scratching on the wall. And he misses. 
Joseph is going to run in and attack this one. So this one is on Sam is on. This one's on the back wall. And this is Joseph's. Joseph is just going to use his crowbar. He's got in his hand crowbar is a metal club. So he is just going to use that crowbar and attempt to bash this thing's skull in. 14. He needed an 11. That is a hit. Four. Oh, he totally smashes the skull of that zombie. Good job, Joseph. Uh, and I, they, they did get the drop on them. I am going to give the one that was standing guard an option to attack Walona, and he is going to attempt to strike her. Oh, I may have to rethink this. Die roller. Six. All right, that is a miss. Maybe I think it's this leather. I think it's gripping too much. All right. Next round. Good guys, bad guys. Skeletons are aware of the attack. We win initiative again. It'd be Kai A. Walona is going to attack the one directly in front of her again. And she misses. Dagna will attempt to smash it with her mace. 14, that is a hit. And she kills that one. Two zombies gone. Sam is going to attempt to strike the one that he ran after. And he misses. Come on, Sam. Joseph will then spin around and run over to the one that's against that back wall. And he misses. All right, now they get to go. The uh, two that remain. The one on this wall and the one on the back wall. That's on Sam. That one misses. The one attacking Joseph. 19 hits Joseph. As Joseph runs over there, it just... Oops. I like these dice. They show better. It turns and nails Joseph. Oh, my good And... <laughs> Joseph goes down. Apparently that little dagger he was using was pretty badass. Joseph goes to negative one hit point. So he has to have someone get to him on the next round. By the end of next round, he will be dead. Let's see. Initiative. We've got the two and our heroes. Oh, same, same time. Hal... Let's out like a, oh my gosh, uh, and you know, excited yell, scream, whatever. Joseph goes down and Walona is going to run right over there and immediately attempt to slow the bleeding, uh, you know, basically do calm him uh, to keep him from dying. She's going to try to stabilize him. Dagna is going to attempt to take out that zombie in the back. This badass with one hit point. She misses. Sam is going to try to take care of his. Come on, Sam. And that is a hit, just barely. Only one hit point on that one. That one goes down, which means the one standing over the down Joseph. And also Walona's on her knees with Joseph. Um, and, and Dagna. Dagna's right in front of him fighting him. Uh, I think it's going to go after Dagna. Three, that is a miss. All right, initiative. This thing's slight. You know what? I don't like that. Damn it. Beauty of the internet. I'll go in and use special effects to make that dice tray look like that. <laughs> All right, initiative. Oh my gosh, we're going to go again. <sighs> All right, it will attempt to attack Dagna again. Eighth needs a 14. That is a miss. Dagna will attack it. Misses. Sam is going to switch out his D20 that apparently has decided it hates us. Attempt to take out this one hit point skeleton before it kills the whole party. And he fails. All right, so Wilona has been able to stabilize Joseph as he's not dying. Damn, I guess we'll do initiative again. Oh, the bad guy goes. He's going to attempt to... Well, let's let's see. Uh, Dagna, uh, Sam. <laughs> Thanks, Dice. He's going to attack Sam this time. Needs a 14. Of course. Of course he hits. Five hit points. Jeez. All right. All right, now Sam, very upset that he's been hit. Thank you, Sam. He, just for shits and giggles, he only has one hit point, but. <laughs> All right, Sam does a mighty whopping 
two points of damage, well, four, whatever, and is able to kill the last remaining zombie. Zombie. All right, so they are going to bind wounds. Uh, let's see how many hit points Joseph gets back. He gets four back. And Sam also, and he comes back to full health. All right, for those of you who just wondered what happened, uh, I'm using the optional binding wounds rule from the book. All right, so once that is over, Hal is going to bring the torch in and close the door as best she can while the rest of the group is going to explore a little bit. They're now going to attempt to decipher what is written on the walls. And I'm going to use my oracle here because as a GM, I have a very rough idea of what's going on in the world outside of the play region. And I have a very general idea of what's happening and I'm doing that for two purposes. Primarily, I want this to be emergent. I want to be a little bit surprised by what transpires in the game. But the second thing is, is since I'm playing solo, I don't wanna know the exact details of what's going on. I want the game and the dice and the Oracle just to kind of create it as we play and as we go through the series. And if you want an idea, I did a video that I called a cutscene a couple episodes ago. That is kind of a clue for what's going on in the world. So, and I know that this is connected to that. So I have a tangently connected idea of what's going on. What I'm going to do now is these skeletons are scratching something on the wall. I have an idea of what they're scratching. And what I'm gonna do really quick is I am going to roll to see, first of all, if they can, anybody in the party can read it. I think, ooh, that was a mistake there. I think there is a pretty good chance how Rhonda or Willona will. So I'm going to roll for them separate. For everybody else, I'm basically going to roll 50-50. Because this could be in common, or this could be in a language that maybe they know. Uh, blue die is yes, positive they can read it. Five is no. So, Joe cannot. Sam cannot. I'm going to assume that's a no. Dagna cannot. Wow, that was, everybody rolled terrible. Now, for Hal, she's a magic user. I assume my knowledge of fantasy gaming and medieval worlds and all that magic users are like clergy they read they read ancient texts they study unknown and strange things so i think there's a good chance she might be able to decipher it wow no all right willona it's down to you same thing with willona see if she knows no wow all right so obviously the fates want this to be unknown, what they're going to do now is they are going to notice the writing or scratchings on these walls. And, and I assume the wall is covered. There's just, it, it's on all the walls a lot. Zombies were bored and they started to write things on the walls and they had lots of time on their hands. So... Our party's relatively intelligent. We got a couple of people with uh, plus one intelligence, plus one wisdom. They're going to notice that what is written on the wall is repetitious. It's a pattern that repeats frequently. And so Willona and Helronda, one of them had a writing kit. Ah, Willona. Willona is going to get out her writing kit and maybe she'll do a rubbing you know, like uh, you can do on like a uh, tombstone. She'll put a piece of paper up there and with a thing of charcoal and uh, copy it down exactly and then store it away. Uh, while she's doing that, I am going to do one other thing really quick. The rest of the party is going to search the room. Hal is going to keep her ear on the door and listen for any movement going on out there. Um, let's, let's finish this first. So... In a video 
that was posted recently by, uh, man, I can't pronounce your name. Chaos, chaos, wait, it's chaos and apocalypse. Chaopolis, I think. Great video. Uh, it's a great uh, YouTube channel. Go watch it. Uh, I was watching one of his recent videos and he had a copy of this, which I did not realize this ever came out. This is basically just the tables that are in Perilous Wilds and just collected into one thing. It's available on uh, drive through and it eliminates the need to constantly flip through the book to find what we all really want because the original book was written for Dungeon World, which was all the rage around 2012, 2013. And I'm not sure people even still play it. I'm sure there's a couple of you out there still playing it, but it's not as popular as it used to be. Anywho, uh, it has nice little cool tables. So while we're searching that, we're gonna find, we're gonna roll on here and see if we find anything. So I'm, I'm gonna do the same thing. Joseph is going to have a 50-50 chance. And if we do find something, I'm going to roll on this little fine table here. It's a trimmed down treasure table. I just kind of like it. Joseph did not. Sam did, what the? All right, if we roll one more doubles, we're going to have a random event because this is getting ridiculous. Dagna, no. And Walona's is doing that. Well, I guess, hey, we didn't need to do that. Anyway, this is a great little product. If you think it's cool, you know, maybe go buy it. And that's what you get by doing emergent play. You may go down a tangent that has absolutely nothing to do with anything. All right. Uh, I'm going to check really quick. Nope. All right. We do not hear anything coming down the hall. We find nothing in this room. And we write down, we, we do a rubbing of whatever is on the wall. And now we are going to head back out and continue down this path. Now, I did over here when there was a monster. I am going to assume that there is a monster in that room. Simply because the cards tell me that there is. And I am going to stick with that. All right, so let's see... What is in that room? Uh, well, let, let's let's listen. Let's see if we hear anything. Joseph, we're, we're walking down this hallway very cautiously and listening. Hal, nope. Sam, Sam does hear something. Walona does as well. Dagna does not. So they hear something in that room. DM roll, seven, shoot, more zombies. Damn it. Well, is that door intact? Oops. No. Well, all righty then. All right. So as we're going down this hall, we hear a noise and we stop immediately. And, oh shit, we have a torch, which is probably giving away our position. Uh, let's, let's see if... Whatever is in that room sees us, sees our torch. They obviously weren't uh, weren't attracted by f combat in the room right next to them. So I'm gonna, th I'm kind of gonna think this this zombie or zombies are doing something in here. So I'm gonna go with a 50-50 on if they have noticed the light in the hall. No. All right. So the next thing to figure out is what are they doing? I've got a nice little table here of what they are doing in there. And let's let's see what it rolls here. Well, that stinks. That is waiting for prey. And the way I'm going to interpret that is they're in there waiting to ambush somebody that comes into the room. So now this is an interesting kind of quandary that we we find ourselves in. As a DM, I know that there are zombies in there waiting to leap on our party members. But our party also heard them. Maybe maybe the zombie knocked something over or dropped something. Uh, maybe it's a zombie. Maybe one of... Yeah, let's go with that. While they're standing there, they hear something wet and juicy plop to the ground. 
And what that is, is a zombie's arm has rotted off and fallen to the ground and alerted our heroes as they're coming down the hall. So we've got zombies in here waiting to ambush the band. And the band is out in the hall aware that there's something in there. Now, they don't know what's in there. But I'm going to do the same kind of thing I did before. This is always good. <laughs> so if this rolls high, less than the party. If this rolls high, more than the party. And if they roll doubles, it'll be the exact same number as the party. Oh, goody. There's more than the party. Um, hmm. So we've got five. Let's roll one of these and we'll add that to it. Oh, good. There's only six. That's, it's not the end of the world, ladies and gentlemen. So we have six zombies in the room. So more zombies. We, we, we like zombies, right? This is so the band comes around the corner. I think, I think Wilona and Dagna are leading the way. Joseph is a bard, not necessarily a frontline warrior. They are going to peek around the door and they don't see anything. They are going to then step in to explore the room. We have this. So let's just do a real quick so we can figure out what is in this room. It's a seven. Oh, it's flooded. Ooh. So this room actually has a couple steps that go down. Maybe the whole room isn't flooded. Let's let's go with that. The left far corner is flooded in the room. Maybe, maybe just like a couple inches, maybe at most up to your knee or something. But the room is uneven, the floor is not level, and the corner there is flooded. So the band is going to see that. All right, so there's pillars, and it's also slightly flooded. Hal, or I'm sorry, Dagna and Wilona are going to step into the room, and they are immediately going to be attacked by the two closest zombies. The first zombie will attack Dagna and misses second one attacks Wilona and misses so Wilona and Dagna step into this room immediately get attacked and then the other four zombies step out on the sides and of course that's when everything kind of explodes everybody starts shouting uh, and everything goes crazy so initiative now come on guys yes all right, so the first thing, Wilona is going to attempt to turn them because they are outnumbered and there are lots of them. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I edited my uh, table because I, I found a great post online on a blog and I really liked... One thing I don't like about the white box uh, FMAG version is the turning table switched to a d20 and i actually like this one i don't remember who did it it might have been dyson I'm not sure but uh they used it as a d6 and i really like it so i'm going to use a d6 or a 2d6 sorry to determine if we she can turn these so the way i do it here is she has a plus one on her wisdom i give her a plus one on these dice and that's part of the reason why i want to go with this is in white box you only have a maximum of a plus one or a minus one and so to actually make that have value i think you should add it to checks like if i had a thief in the in the band when they do their thief checks which will also use a 2d6 uh, there's a couple of variants floating around online. One I know is Dyson. I know he had one that was very good. She will add one to this. She uh, needs an eight. You can see right here, it's the ones in pencil. I don't know if you can see that or not on the camera. For a zombie, she is first level, so she needs an eight on this, and she will get a plus one. She steps forward and, foul beast. Fear my deity's wrath and, and tells them to go away. And she got a 10. So that works. The zombie's jaw opens. Their, their crusty, dirty, rusted eyes pop out of their sockets in awe. And they flee. 
They attempt to run into the far corners of this room as quickly as they can, and they are kind of smashed, three of them in each corner, smashing themselves up against the corner, looking over their shoulders in fear. They are terrified of the band. So let's see how long they are going to be that way. 13, 13 rounds. Wilona has a intrinsic... Uh, if you remember, I talked about it in a previous video. She was basically coming here on a crusade to eradicate the undead. So she has an intrinsic desire to destroy these things. So while they could just leave them here and continue searching, that leaves a danger in the dungeon. And I would never do that personally. And I don't think they will either, in addition to two of the party members really wanting to do, these, do them in and kill them. So what we're going to do is... The band is going to walk over. They have a couple flasks of oil. They're going to smash the flasks of oil, pour the oil onto the zombies. They'll light a second torch, and they'll use their torches to set them aflame. I'm not going to act all that out, but they will die a violent, burning, horrible death. And I don't think we're even going to search that room. I think we're going to count that as a win. And... Smoke's going to get pretty bad, so we are going to go ahead and leave that room. Let's see what lies ahead. Ooh, lots of stuff here. It's got a trap in it. Ooh, there's a trap. All right. Oops, I want to turn it the other way here. I'm going to spread out my dungeon a little bit. All right, so the band is going to continue. And they are going to listen again and see if they hear anything up ahead. Peering around these corners as they go. Joseph, no. Hal, no. Sam, no. Alona, no. Dagna, Dag, no. Dagna, wait, on a two, is she? Sorry, I'm not that familiar with the dwarves. Dwarves are not my favorite peeps. Oh, yeah, she does. She does hear something up ahead. First, let's figure out what this trap is. Six. Hidden pit trap. Awesome. All right. So Dagna hearing something is going to creep forward. And they're going to keep the torch. Let me switch my pointers here. My fingers are giant and fat. They're going to keep their torch around this corner and just let the light shine a little bit as Dagna starts to walk up here. And she is going to step on a trap. And let's see, traps are triggered on a one or two. Dwarves can detect stonework, trap, stonework traps on a one and four. Well, that's actually, actually very good. Is it a stonework trap? Let's go with that first. Yes, no. Yes, it is. That means she has a one in four chance of spotting it before setting it off. Oops. It's got to go in there, guys. Oh, she does. So Dagna is creeping along this hall, and she notices a pit trap. So she is going to come back to the group. She's going to study it a little bit, figure it out. So she sees how the trap is fired, figures out how to get around it, and then she is going to come back and tell the rest of the band. And then she is going to attempt to go around it. But she's also going to tie a rope around herself and have them hold the rope. So that if it does fire, she can go, uh, she gets saved. She's able to cross it without setting off the trap. So she gets across and then what they're going to do is each person will hold onto the rope as they squeeze past there. Now while they're doing that. I'm going to see, because this is going to take a little while. They're going to be talking, making some noise. A one and six for a random encounter in this hall. No. All right. So the band is able to get, overcome that trap very easily. And now they are faced with three doors. The first door on the north wall, is it intact? Yes. The south wall, same. No. And this one down here, yes. So we've got... Door, no door, and door. Let's see if there's something in here. Oh, crapola, there is. 
What is in there? Seven. We, apparently, we're just going to call this zombie hallway. So, zombie hallway. All right, same thing. Equal to the party, or I'm sorry, less, equal. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, less, equal, more. Less than the party. So, we're going to roll a D6, and it has to be lower than a 5. We'll go with that. Well, let, that was inconclusive. Roll it again. Four zombies. What are they doing in this room? Five. They are waiting in ambush. Dice gods really want to kill us with zombies, don't they? The door is open, which is suspicious. <laughs> Hal is going to stay back with her torch. And Will Lona and Dagna are going to basically storm into the room. And we'll see if... Uh, see if they surprise us and uh, shit, they do. So the, they step in the first two zombies are going to attack. One will attack Willona. And that is a miss. The other one will attack Dagna. That is a miss. And we'll go ahead and have them all attack. It's a small room. Oh, that is a hit. One hit Willona. Oh my goodness. And that takes Wilona down. The other one attacks Dagna. Oh, Jesus. And hits Dagna. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Dice Gods. Then we will go into initiative. You know what? I'm going to do something really quick. I am hitting my microphone. I'm hoping it's not messing up my audio every time I reach for the dice. So, initiatives... As soon as that they, they step out and attack, everybody sees it. Wilona goes down. The rest of the party moves forward. So, let's see. Oh, good. We won. All right. Dagna will attack one. That is a hit. She's attacking this first one here. Oh, yes. Dagna is not very happy with that. Took down one of her friends. Uh, Joseph will step in. Oh, and he hits. He's attacking this one here. And he kills it. Oh, what the hell? All right. Sam is going to attack this one. Hal is going... She's now our medic in the band here. She is going to run over to Willona and attempt to kind of stabilize her. Let's see what Sam does. Sam does good. Four, buddy. Oh, wow. Apparently, we have studied the zombies in detail and we are aware of their tactics now and so we're a little bit better prepared or something like that all right the zombie will attack one two three four so sorry that was backwards one two three four three attack sam doesn't like short people all right misses all right initiative the one zombie beats out the band and will attack Sam again. And misses. Sam will extract, extract revenge and misses. <laughs> Dagna violently swings her mace in anger and misses. Joseph swings his sword to try to lop off the head of oh it's got six hit points this zombie and that is a hit thank goodness and a mighty one point of damage uh initiatives all right good guys go all right sam hits down to two dagna goes Misses Sam, or I'm sorry, Joseph. That is a hit. Come on, buddy. Yeah. All right. What was this room prior to it getting undead inhabitants? So five. You know what? Hold on. I don't, I'm tired of rolling five. Rule nine. This room here was a small temple with a single water altar and let's see what do we got to roll d6 
All right, so this water altar, it looks like a stone birdbath, a big basin with fancy carvings on it, uh, probably depicting St. Albanus. And let's see what, oh, oh, before we do any of that, we need to revive Willona. And see how many hit points she gets back. Okay, so she is back to full. And Hal is going to continue watching this hallway to see if anything, so we're not surprised, basically. Let's see what this temple uh, water altar does. Sam is brave. I thought that's what that I put on there. I would <laughs> say that is also rather foolish. But Sam wants to pour water into the basin and see if anything happens. So he pours water in. DM moment here. Five. He pours water in there. The water glows brightly. And Sam, being brave and more than likely rather foolhardy, decides that this would be a good thing to test. So he is going to sample this water. Now I've got on here that he gets a plus two to his strength check. For simplicity's sake, I am going to say that lasts a day. And I'm not sure that I'll actually come up. If it does, we'll use it. If not, we won't. Um, I'm also going to have the band, because they've done a lot, I really want them to get something out of this. So we're going to roll on this table here in my Perilous Tables handbook here. It's a home print job. Let's see what they find in this room. Five, weapons and armor. Hmm, interesting. That's weird, but okay. And we're going to turn to the Delving Deeper. Uh, this one might have it. I don't know if it does. I'm going to roll this one because I know where it's at already. And I think it is more likely that it will be a weapon than armor. So I'm going to say this, whatever they find, armor-wise, this is a, a one or a two. It's armor, three, four, five, weapon. And if I roll six, there's two weapons, but they'll be smaller. Armor. All right, well, there you go. In here, they find a shield plus one. Okay. Let's see. One and two, it's a small armor or shield, uh, like a buckler. Three, four, and five, it's a normal size. And six, it's a larger one, like, like a Roman shield, one of the big ones. Okay, it's a giant Roman shield plus one. The weird things we find in here. With that, we are going to stop there for episode six with the band down in the dungeon, the Temple of St. Albinus. Hope you enjoyed. Come back and catch the next episode. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.